What are you hearing about former President Trump's news conference that's set for the next hour? Well, Boris, I was told that this was going to focus heavily on the economy. Obviously, he's going to open it up for questions, but that he wants to reiterate that messaging on the economy. Obviously, we saw yesterday he gave a speech in North Carolina where the focus was supposed to be the economy. And for Donald Trump, it was a rather focused speech, a smaller venue, a crowd that was sitting down. And we're told he's going to give more of these kind of issue based speeches across the country as his team tries to keep him on message. Obviously, as again, we have reported, Kamala Harris has really shaken up this race, her boost in enthusiasm, her boost in polling. And among, amid all of that, we've seen Donald Trump at times really seeming to not be able to contain himself, not be able to stay on those important issues that his campaign thinks will help him win in November. So as for this news conference, we will see how it goes. We will see if he stays on message. But the big goal coming out of that was to keep yesterday and today focused on the economy. And Kristen, we are also learning an old face is coming back to the Trump campaign. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, a few old faces, actually, but perhaps the most notable is Corey Lewandowski. He was the first campaign manager ever for Donald Trump. He joined Trump's campaign in June of 2015. He ultimately was ousted and replaced by Paul Manafort about a year later. He is going to be back on the campaign. And again, all of this coming at a time in which allies have expressed concerns about the direction that this campaign is going in and the direction the candidate is heading in. And Lewandowski is a staunch supporter, a staunch ally of Donald Trump's. And we did get a statement from Chris LaSavita and Susie Wiles. They are the heads of the Trump campaign. And we are told by sources they're not going anywhere. These are just, just additions. But in the statement, they say, as we head into the home stretch of this election, we are continuing to add to our impression campaign team, Corey Lewandowski, Taylor Budowich, who was the head of MAGA Inc., the super PAC aligned with Donald Trump, Alex Pfeiffer, spokesperson for MAGA Inc., Alex Bruzowitz and Tim Murtaugh are all veterans of prior Trump campaigns and their unmatched experience will help Donald Trump persecute, prosecute the case against Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, the most radical ticket in American history. Again, this is very clearly these additions are coming at a time in which we've seen the polling, We've seen the energy shift on the Democratic side, and we've seen the concerns from Republicans around Donald Trump that he needs to be more on message heading into this critical period. So very interesting to see this kind of changes at this time. Yeah, notable to say the least. Kristen Holmes, Eva McKen, thank you both so much. Let's discuss all the aspects of the campaign right now with former Trump White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. Anthony, great to see you as always. Thanks for being with us. First, I, I want to ask you about uh, the economic speech that Trump gave last night in Asheville. Uh, Kristen pointed out that the campaign is going to be focused on these smaller events, not rallies, kind of centered around a single issue. Why do you think that is and, and what grade would you give the former president's performance yesterday? Well, I mean, listen, it's the same grade. I, I give him a grade of a T, which is he's Donald Trump. That's how he's going to talk to people. He's demeaning and degrading and he's off topic. So He's going to try to repair that today with the press conference. And I, you know, I want to give a shout out to Corey Lewandowski. He's a, he is a friend of mine, even though he's on the wrong team. I like Corey and uh, I don't wish him well with this thing, but I wish him well in general in life because I want Donald Trump to lose. But, but I, I would say this to you, the smaller events are because he's worried about crowd sizes. He does not want his crowd sizes to be overwhelmed uh, by Vice President Harris, and it looks that way. If you look at her crowd sizes recently, uh, she's getting way more people. Uh, he knows that, and so that's why he's making this adaptation. So uh, we can't rule Mr. Trump out of this race. He's a very aggressive, very formidable competitor, and he's recalibrating right now how he's going to approach the race from here to November. And I'll just point out to viewers and listeners, he he did the same thing in August of 2016. Uh, we had a swap out in, in August of 2016 and Kellyanne Conway and Steve Bannon joined uh, and the race, you know, got a lot tighter and a lot more complex after they they joined. So he's doing something very similar right now. He made a similar move in, in 2020. Uh, do you believe the campaign when they say that their current heads, Chris LaCivita and Susie Wiles, aren't going anywhere? Do you think that might soon change, too? Well, I think there's a lot of pressure. You know, there's been a lot of news reports that uh, Chris was in particular trouble. 
Oh, uh, you know, the 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 inside scuttlebutt is it's a little rough on the staff and Donald Trump doesn't like the direction things are going in. And Boris, I don't know if you remember George Steinbrenner, but Donald Trump sees himself as a modern day George Steinbrenner. So when things are not going well, it's never his fault. He's got to find scapegoats. So yeah. um, I think the pressure, though, now that this has been reported in the press that he was going to fire Chris has probably stayed that execution for a while. Uh, but there's disarray in the campaign. Uh, Corey's very close to President Trump, uh, and I think he's been relying on some good advice from from Corey. Uh, and so, listen, a three-headed monster, it didn't work. Uh, you can ask Pompey, Crassus, and Caesar. It didn't work in Rome. It's not going to work here. They'll be fighting with each other coming into Labor Day. So what do you think it means then for the campaign that they're relying on this boost and that they're potentially jeopardizing the dynamic with bringing someone like Corey Lewandowski in? Well, Trump wants a shakeup. He doesn't like where things are. He's not hes not on firm footing with his messaging. Uh, the stuff that he used against Hillary Clinton is not sticking with Vice President Harris. And so he wants to shake things up. And we'll have to see today at 430 if he can stay on message. He's being told by his aides, if you stick to the issues, the border, the economy, People feeling better, meaning having more money in their pocketbook, inflation, uh, he'll tighten up these polls. If he doesn't want to do that and he wants to call the vice president mean and nasty and he wants to use derogatory insults about her intelligence, uh, I think he'll lose the race. And so I think his aides are telling him that. Um, And so I think he'll recalibrate because this guy wants to win and he's a formidable politician. And this is one of many adaptations that he's made during the course of his political career. And we'll, we'll, we'll see if he, uh, if he if he's less derogatory at 430. Yeah, we'll see. It, 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 it is interesting, though, because even that sort of sentiment, when you hear reporting about sources inside the Trump camp, that he wants a shakeup, that, that he doesn't feel like he's on firm footing, his favorability numbers in a campaign have never been higher. I believe he's close to 45, 44%, 44% right now. You look at 2020 and 2016, what do you attribute that to? Well, I, I, I think he's I think he's been he's been fairly disciplined up until the Harris shakeup of the Democratic presidential nomination. So he's been fairly disciplined. Um, but I, I think those numbers are his his ceiling. I think he has, as everybody says, he has this high floor, but a low ceiling. Uh, when you look at data, he could get to 47 and a half percent. That's why the Republicans want people like Jill Stein and RFK Jr. in the race so they can chip away at Vice President Harris. But, uh, you know, that's a good number for him. That's about as good as it's going to get, frankly. And that's the fact that he's off of Twitter. If those meanderings on Truth Social, the insanity that he writes on Truth Social was actually on Twitter, and for those 80 million plus people that follow him on X or uh, now called X, I think it'd be a disaster for him and those numbers would drop. Uh, so he's been a beneficiary of being on true social because he's talking to a hard right MAGA echo chamber over there. and People are not seeing the full insanity of the stuff that he's writing. Uh, conversely, I'm wondering what you think Vice President Harris needs to do as she lays out her vision of the economy in this speech in North Carolina tomorrow. What do you think would be an effective message from her? I think an effective message is that the Joe Biden policies are working. Same thing that uh, President Biden said yesterday. Stay the course. We're heading for a soft landing. Rate cuts are coming. Inflation is coming down. Manufacturing is up. Onshoring of manufacturing is there. The infrastructure bill is lowering the cost of the delivery of goods and services. There's some rumors that she's talking about price controls. I hope she doesn't go in that direction because that'll be very bad for the stock market. It'll be very bad for uh, the capital markets in general in the United States. I think she should also emphasize that she wants an independent Fed. Donald Trump is calling Mm. for a dependent Fed on Donald Trump. So I guess he wants to be Erdogan of Turkey, and he wants to turn our Federal Reserve into the Turkish Central Bank, which would be an unmitigated disaster for the United States. So she should compare and contrast her messaging to his, but I really hope she stays away from price controls Uh, because that would be very bad for the economy and it would be very bad for her campaign. Last point, though, I think this is a good one. 
I, I, I recommend that she does not take any interviews between now mm -hmm. and her nomination. There's no need for her to do that. Uh, I know uh, the, the media wants her to do that, but she's running a campaign for the American voters. I think her number one goal should be on missile lock to get that nomination before she, she steps out. That's an interesting point. Anthony Scaramucci, by the way, I, I do remember George Steinbrenner. He was great on Seinfeld. Anthony, thank you so much. <laughs> Better on Seinfeld than he was as a Yankee boss. But yeah. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm implying. Thanks so much, Anthony. Appreciate you.